Welcome to the progression guide. In today's video, we're going to discuss seven topics, which are basics, map locations, base building, cosmosks and dead zones, airdrops, raiding, and horde beacons. If you guys enjoyed this video and do learn something and want to see more, make sure to drop a like, let's aim for 200 likes. If we reach that like goal in 24 hours, I'll do a full quest guide as well. Also subscribe to not miss any future videos. Last video I announced the mythical giveaway and this is the winner. If you're watching and you want to claim your prize, please join my discord which will be in the description below and contact me over there. Today we're going to run another one which is a wealthy corrosive night raider. If you want to win this make sure that you've liked, subscribed and comment something below. Channel members also have a higher chance of winning. You guys want to start your own unturned escalation server, either for your network or just want to play with your friends? Look no further than Pine Hosting. Pine Hosting makes setting up your server quite easily. They have very good performance servers and they are a very user friendly interface that is super easy to learn. When I first started into server hosting my own network, I literally had no idea how to do anything. But with Pine Hosting's navigation, I learned it quite quickly. With several locations scattered across the globe, the pricing was also very cheap. They also have a variety of games where you can buy servers including Rust, Ark and Minecraft. A standout feature is the ability to install plugins and mods just by clicking once. I already have a server with another provider, no worries, they'll provide personalized assistance to help you migrate your server. If you're ready to start your own unturned servers, don't miss the link in the description below and make sure to use the code LDG for an incredible 30% discount and let's get straight into the video. Before we start, I would like to announce that this guide was recorded before the map launched, so some stuff may change here and there, and if they do, I will have them in the comment section below. If you guys have any questions, also feel free to ask, and I will try to respond to as much as possible. The first chapter we're going to go over is the basics. Basically, I will just discuss some important tools, how to get them, and what they are used for. Firstly, this one is quite self-explanatory, we have metal scrap, but metal scrap can be turned into metal ingots, and if you do have a toolbox, you can make it into metal springs. Next, we have electronic scrap, which can be turned into circuit boards. Circuit boards are quite useful, also electronic scrap. In order to get these electronic scraps, you can salvage various items, including attachments. Next, we have refined oil. Refined oil can basically be gathered either by finding them in construction areas, or you can also explode explosive barrels that are all across the map. Obviously, don't get too close because it will give damage or even kill you, but you would need to shoot it down. Next we have adhesive compounds, which is probably the most important item in this map to craft. To craft this, all you need is just glue, duct tape and chemicals, obviously all of them are found in construction areas. If you do progress the quest guide a little bit though, you will unlock a shop which you can buy some of these items, including duct tape. Next we have fabric scrap, which is quite self-explanatory, this can be stacked into fabric and this will give you either bandages, beds and fabric is also quite useful for certain items. If you salvage weapons, this will give you gun parts, either automatic, semi-automatic and also metal scrap. Once you salvage these gun parts though they will give you metal springs as well which are important as well. Next we have filament spools which can be stacked into plastic scrap. Filament spools basically are stacked plastic scrap. If you salvage a filament spool you will get four scrap. You will also notice that there are various books around the map which if you have them you will unlock more items that you can craft. You can also craft generators and work lights instead of just finding them in construction areas. Next let's go over to the next chapter which is chapter 2 map locations. In this chapter we're going to mention which are the best places, what kind of loot they will give you, especially since you probably have no idea where to start from. I will also have a detailed loot guide coming out soon where I will do a list of every location, all of the items that you can get from this location. But in this video I'll just mention in brief detail. Firstly we have TKR Industrial, which is the only place that you can place a horde beacon. From here you can get construction items, military items and firefighter items. Next we have Everett, which is just a normal town, just has civilian locations. Thirdly we have Red Grove Airfield, which is a ranger area, dropping various weapons, melee weapons and clothing. Over here you can also find the tank. Next we have Vernon Farm, which is just a normal farm, you can get farm Farm items, clothes, few weapons, melee weapons, and a lot of seeds. Next we have Fort Martin, which is a military base. From here you can get military items, clothing, melee weapons, police loot, and so much more. Next we have Log Dynamics, which is also a military and construction area. From here you can get construction loot including items for adhesive compounds, weapons, melees, and clothes. Fletcher Island is just a construction area, very very small. Next we have Artemis Platform, which is a tiered 2 dead zone, having the highest tier weapons, clothes, attachments, and ammunition. Parkwood is the main city. From here you can get almost everything from military, civilian, construction, police, and medical. So for Camp Crystal, it's just a normal camp, but from here you can get axes, rods, clothes and food. Walk-in is just a small town and from here you can get civilian, various weapons and construction items. As for the two red circles around the map, these are a tier 1 dead zone. From here you can get some really good items, which we will discuss later on. There are also a lot of various unmarked locations, there are military tunnels north of a Termis platform and there are various construction areas too around the map. Next we'll go over to the third chapter where this one is base building. 
Now on this map, there are three tiers that you can build your base in. First tier, which is wood. Basically, building this is very easy. Only takes a few wood to build buildables. And most melees do chop down trees in this map. And all wooden buildables do have 500 HP each. The second tier is reinforced wood. It's also quite easy to build. All you need is just a wooden buildable and just one metal ingot, which is basically for scrap. I honestly recommend doing this before you actually start building with wood. Especially if you're just going to build a one by one. All you need is just a few ingots and a few wood. And your base HP is increased by double. And finally, we have the strongest material, which is tier 3, which is metal. This does have 5000 HP, which is quite a lot, actually. To craft this oil, you require some ingots and refined oil, which we can get from explosive barrels, which I mentioned earlier. You can also get this from construction zombies too. For this, you do require cooking one and heat, and in order to get heat though, you do require a blast forge. Next, we're going to go over the handbook, which is the complex building manual. From this, you can get this from trading at the safe zone, and with this, you basically use them into center buildables, meaning that they're in the middle of a foundation. This is for more creative builders. Me personally, I'm not really a huge fan of it. Does look cool, but I probably won't really be using it at all. Next we have the lockers. Now there are two types of lockers in this map. The first locker is just very easy to craft, you just need some ingots and some springs. As for the industrial locker though, you do have two options to make this, but both of them do require a toolbox. Firstly, you can make one with ingots, springs and a toolbox. The second method is by upgrading a locker you that you already had and adding a few more ingots and springs. As for wooden storages, you can make a wooden crate with just 8 logs, a large wooden crate with 20 logs, plastic crates can be made with 3D printers and colored filament spools, and with 10 logs you can make a wooden wardrobe. Now I did just mention toolboxes and toolboxes are very important for base building. With toolboxes you can craft various important items such as claim beacons, 3D printers, metal counters, small industrial generators, port beacons, industrial lockers, sentry engines, metal wardrobes, work lamps, EOD clothing which is the strongest clothing, building planners, sentry auto cannons and HMT 250 which is the minigun. You can place these toolboxes in your base. To build a toolbox, you require the following items, which are metal ingots, wood logs, duct tape, pliers, blowtorch, wrench, and a hammer. You can craft and find wrenches and hammers. To craft a wrench, you just need two metal ingots, and to craft a hammer, you need wooden logs and metal scrap. Next, we have the Blast Forge, which I just mentioned some time ago as well. A Blast Forge gives you heat, which is important for base building. To craft a Blast Forge, you need metal ingots, circuit boards, refined oil springs, and adhesive compounds. Next, we're going to go over the sentries and the turrets. For a sentry, you need the following items. You need metal ingots, circuit boards, work lamps, adhesive compounds, metal plaque, and a toolbox. As for the sentry auto cannon, which never runs out of ammo, you need HMG components, which you can get from Dead Zone Tier 1 under the Grove Airfield, ingots, adhesive compounds, high tech fuses, which you can also get from the Dead Zone if you salvage a Valkyrie, and a toolbox. This weapon is quite strong, it has a 300 meter range, 500 rounds per minute, and 35 player damage, so it is quite OP. Next, let's go over to the claim generator. A claim generator is needed, so players won't be able to build around your base. I'm pretty sure you guys know all of this. And for this, you need ingots, springs, adhesive compounds, circuit boards, and a toolbox. Next, we're going over to Chapter 4, which is Gauss Musk and Dead Zones. To craft a Gauss Musk, you require the following items. Gauss Musk filter, fabric, and plastic scrap. To make a Gauss Musk filter, you need a canteen, which you can find in military bases, coffee filters, adhesive compounds, duct tape, fabric, and plastic scrap. For most of these items, it is very easy to find them. Coffee filters, duct tape, fabric, and plastic scrap are found in construction areas. And as for adhesive compounds, as I mentioned earlier, you need to craft them with duct tape, glue, and chemicals, all found in construction areas as well. Some good construction areas include the main city, Fletcher Island, and Log Dynamics. Let's go over to the Tier 1 Dead Zones. The Tier 1 Dead Zones are the ones under Vernon Farm and Red Grove Airfield. For these, you only need a Gauss Musk. In here, you can find some really good loot, including high-tier weapons such as ECS-25, Noct, Compact, RSS-03, and much more weapons. In the Dead Zone next to Red Grove Airfield, you can get a Valkyrie ERG-2 from the Armory and also HMG components from breaking the HMG that is placed on the table. In this dead zone, a mega zombie does spawn. The dead zone next to Vernon Farm, you can enter from various ways, including a cave system and jumping into a hole. From the dead zones, you can get basically almost everything. You can get airdrop grenades, you can get high tier PvP weapons, attachments, a lot of ammo. I did basically just survive 24 hours living next to a dead zone, and from this dead zone, I literally got everything that I needed. Now let's go over to the tier 2 dead zone, which is Artemis platform. Underwater around it, there are underwater bombs, so be careful when you're swimming. To enter this area, you would need a gauss mask and also biohazard clothing. To make biohazard clothing, you need firefighter clothing, high tech fuses, metal ingots, and adhesive compounds. From here, you can get EOD vests, which gives you 40% armor, 80% explosive armor, but drops your movement speed down by 25%. From here, you can get Tunisian, Compact, Acid, and much more weapons. You can also get all sorts of attachments, high-caliber ammunition, high-tech fuses, baffle kits, missiles, night vision, LE specs, 
and so much more. Let's move on to the next chapter, which is chapter 5, which is quite a short chapter, but airdrop grenades. One of my most favorite features from this map is that airdrops can be spawned by you at your location that you pick. So if you do build a base and you actually have a large base and you go on the roof and just spam airdrop grenades that you find, your airdrops are literally just safe. You can find airdrop grenades from military zombies, especially dead zone zombies. Airdrop grenades spawn airdrops, which can have a ton of high tier items, including high caliber ammunition, explosive charges, adhesive compounds, acids, night vision, ECS-25, baffle kits, HE grenades, AP grenades, Hermes, nitroglycerin, Bicey, Hermes, blank strike module, detonators, LTLM, and so much more. Next, let's go over chapter 6, which is raiding. Now, this chapter is quite long. We're gonna go over most of the raiding methods, starting with, obviously, charges and detonators. They aren't really actually that hard to find in this map. Buildables are a bit strong, though. Explosive charges give 550 structure damage, so for a wooden wall, you require just 1c4. For reinforced wood, you need 2, and for metal buildables, you require 9c4. To craft c4, you need a circuit board which you can stack from electronics, adhesive compound, metal scrap, plastic scrap, and nitroglycerin. To find a detonator, you can just go to a tier 1 dead zone or military locations. There is also a thermal charge. It is much stronger, but you do require more items, and it also detonates itself. Next, we're going to go over rocket launchers. There are two rocket launchers, the Poseidon and the Ares. The Poseidon is very easy to craft, just ingots, impact grenade, and nitroglycerin. The downside is that it's a single-use rocket launcher, but it's really strong against vehicles. As for the Ares, you can only get this from airdrops. The Ares holds up to 4 rockets and gives 400 structure damage per shot. Next, let's go over to the tank. The tank can be found in Red Grove Airfield, and to craft its missiles, you need 3 nitroglycerin, 2 ingots, and 1 circuit board. Next, let's go over the grenade launcher, which is the Hermes. There are multiple different types of grenades, including AP grenades, flashbang grenades, spring grenades, HE grenades, and small grenades. Pretty sure they are all self-explanatory. To get these, you can either find them from air drops, or I'm pretty sure you can also get them from the dead zone, but basically every single airdrop that I have gotten, there were some grenades. Next, let's go over the HMT-250, which is a minigun, which needs to be crafted with HMG components, automatic gun parts, ingots, springs, adhesive compounds, and toolboxes. This weapon is a legendary weapon, it only takes a tactical, has 150 meter range, 422 rounds per minute, and if you equip it, you do move a little bit slower. Next, let's go over to Marksman Magazines. Marksman Magazines do raid, but they just give a very small amount of damage. I do recommend using this if you're just raiding a wooden base. Next we have the Railgun, which is called the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie can be found in the Dead Zone Tier 1 in the Armory, under Red Grove Airfield. This weapon has 600 meter range and obviously can raid. It takes Sabot Slugs, which can be found in the Armory as well. If you do salvage this weapon, you can get high-tech fuses, which are very, very important, as we mentioned earlier. Next we have the Blank Strike Module. The Blank Strike Module can be found in airdrops or if you finish a quest. With this, you can either choose to use it for a Precision Strike, Bomb Strike, or a Mortar Strike. You do require an LTLM to reload this. And we're going to go over the final chapter, which is Horde Beacons. To craft a Horde Beacon, you require the following items, which are metal ingots, a small generator, adhesive compounds, circuit boards, nitroglycerin, and the toolbox. The only place to do the Horde Beacon is at the TKR Industrial. Over there, I do recommend that if you shoot the blue tubes, the flame will come out, killing all the zombies instantly. It is a very OP tactic. Horde Beacons can drop various weapons, including the Nox, Tony Jin RSS, O3, grenades, pistol crates, Night Vision, Falcon 50, LMG Magazines, and much more. A Horde Beacon spawns 100 zombies, including the Mega Zombie, and drops 15 items. Something else that I would like to mention is fishing. There are a few fishing rods, but if you make it till the end, you can get some really good items from fishing. You can get weapon crates, which can drop you a random weapon. You can get items to craft these of compounds. You can get high tier rods, so which you can sell and buy whatever you want. So I really do recommend that you do a little bit of fishing, because you will guaranteed get high tier items. It does take some time to get to the highest rod though, but if you do, it's 100% worth it. And that is it ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that you guys did learn something from this. If you guys do have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I did try to cover as much as possible, but this map there is a lot of stuff to do, but I think I tackled the most important items. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!